Right wheel. No, follow, follow that guy, follow that guy. Yeah, follow that guy. Welcome once again to the 2019 Remembrance Service here in Flesherton. We will be having last post followed by two minutes of silence.
in Flanders fields the poppies blow. Between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw a sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Would you now please join Bill Diamond in the singing of our national anthem? Love in all life 
sons come in. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, a true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. We stand on guard for thee. World War I, 1914 to 1918. Max Bannon. Charles Buchanan. Reuben Cargo. William Davis. D. Edward Jameson. Charles McMullen. Robert C. Kerr, Clarence Orr, Harold A. Mitchell, Harold Phillips, Ira S. Perico, John Sharp, Arnold M. Thurston, Charles Thistlewaite, William Walker, Richard Wilcock, World War II, 1939-1945, Edgar Dupe, Everett J. Fisher, David Graham, Coldwin Kennedy, Harold Mills, Jackson Stewart, Lawrence H. Thompson, lest we forget. Breaks and XP. Order. Stand easy. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Good morning. I would like to once again thank those of you who are in attendance here today in Flesherton at our War Memorial on this Remembrance Day. My name is Daryl Minifee. I am the President of Branch 333 Flesherton Markdale of the Royal Canadian Legion. I am retired from the Canadian Forces and I was a Communications Research Operator and I'm extremely proud to have served Canada for nearly 22 years. As a member of the Canadian Forces, I've spent nine months in Afghanistan, served as a peacekeeper in Bosnia. I've deployed on five naval vessels, including two U.S. ships, conducting counter-narcotics operations in South and Central America. I've also spent six months near the North Pole at Canadian Forces Station Alert, providing overwatch of the Canadian North during the Cold War. But today, I have the special honor of speaking to you about the remarkable sacrifice that our military members have made for Canada.
They've risked their lives so that we can live in a better world. And their stories inspire those of us and those who continue to serve today. Today, I'm going to talk about three anniversaries that are observed this very year. The first anniversary I'd like to highlight is the 75th anniversary of D-Day and the Battle of Normandy. 75 years ago, in the early morning hours of June 6th, Canadian and Allied troops crossed the English Channel into France in the massive amphibious attack that is famously remembered as D-Day. There were 150,000 Allied troops involved, 14,000 of them Canadians. Could they have known the course that the Second World War would turn on this one day? They knew that the Canadian, British and American contingents each had a sector of France's Normandy's coastline to take back from the Nazis that day and they knew that many of them would not be coming home. What the Canadians could not yet know was that they would achieve an outstanding victory. 359 Canadians made the ultimate sacrifice that day. Other troops who survived then pushed further inland to take back the region of Normandy from the Germans. In the grueling battle, 5,000 more Canadians were killed and 13,000 injured. The liberated countries of northwestern Europe still celebrate the Canadians who helped them reclaim their freedom. Over one million Canadians served in the fight against Nazi tyranny and 45,000 lost their lives. It was their sacrifice that allows us to live in peace today. The second important commemoration is the 75th anniversary of the founding of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. It was created because the democratic countries of the North Atlantic region found themselves in a dangerous Cold War with the Soviet Union and its communist allies. So we banded together in a collective defense pact to protect our common values. The Cold War ended in 1991, but new challenges to peace, freedom, and democracy have materialized, which demonstrates the continued need for this allied presence. In the 1990s, thousands of Canadians' military personnel helped stabilize the former Yugoslavia after its violent collapse. After the September 11, 2001 attacks on the United States, NATO took a lead role in fighting terrorist threats. And today, the first female to command a standing NATO fleet of warships was a Canadian, Commodore Jose Kurtz from Joliet, Quebec. This summer, she, along with her allies, with all of our allies helped keep Central and Eastern Europe secure. She is one of thousands of Canadians who have served with NATO over the last 70 years, helping make it one of the most successful military and political alliances ever. The third important anniversary we are commemorating this year is the fifth anniversary of the end of the Canadian mission in Afghanistan. After the September 2001 terrorist attacks, Canada joined the mission to bring peace and stability to Afghanistan and its citizens. There were 40,000 Canadians who served in that mission, which ended just five years ago. I am proud to have been one of those soldiers who served Canada in Afghanistan. This Remembrance Day, Canadian Armed Forces members and veterans like myself we'll be thinking of the 158 service people and seven civilians we lost in the war in Afghanistan, and of the 40 Americans who were serving under Canadian command in Afghanistan at the time of their death. Every year, tens of thousands of Canadians stand together in the annual National Remembrance Day ceremony to honor these and all our veterans. Many Canadians participate in the Right to the Troops program to thank our veterans for their service at home and abroad. Many Canadians visit war monuments across the country 
to have a personal moment of silence. There are many ways to remember the sacrifices of our veterans. What really matters is that we do make the choice to remember. We will now begin with the placing of wreaths. Three, attention! First wreath, Government of Canada. Canadian Armed Forces. Province of Ontario. Canadian Legion, Branch 333. <laughs> Veterans, Widows. Ontario Provincial Police. Gray County. Gray Bruce Health Services. <laughs> Municipality of Gray Highlands. <laughs> Gray Highlands Fire Services. Sergeant Michael James Cottenden. Ontario Teachers Federation. Gray Highland Secondary School.
Prince Arthur Masonic Lodge. Gray Highlands Chamber of Commerce. McPhail Memorial School. Highlands United Church already in place. Gentle Shepherd Church. Rock Mills Baptist Church. Southeast Gray Support Services. Fawcett Funeral Home. Fletcherton Pharmacy. Highland Grounds. The Kinnets. Colton's Garage. The Hill Family. William John Booth. The Ursham Agricultural Society. Foodland. Scouts, Cubs, and Beavers. Abate Chapter 10.
I would like to thank everyone once again for attending this year 2019 Remembrance Service. We will now welcome back Bill Diamond for our Royal Anthem. God save our gracious Queen, long live our noble Queen, God save the Queen, send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us, God save Sergeant at Arms, carry on. Parade, move to the right and three. Right, turn. By the left, lean down the first. Left, quick, mark. 